The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Good morning to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It's Monday, the 27th of September, and I want to thank you for joining us as we gather online to pray the office of morning prayer. I'm going to take a few moments to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church, continuing to ascend into heaven, even if we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same along with me if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of morning prayer will begin on page six. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is gracious and merciful. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O that ye would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is gracious and merciful. O come, let us worship. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 89, verses 1 to 18, beginning on page 443. My song shall be alway of the loving kindness of the Lord. With my mouth will I ever be showing thy faithfulness from one generation to another. For I have said, Loving kindness shall be built up for ever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish for ever, and set up thy throne from one generation to another. O Lord, the very heavens shall praise thy wondrous works, and thy faithfulness in the congregation of the holy ones. For who is he in the skies that shall be compared unto the Lord? And what is he among the gods that shall be like unto the Lord? God is very greatly to be feared in the counsel of the holy ones, and to be had in reverence above all them that are round about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is like unto thee? Thy faithfulness, most mighty Lord, is on every side. Thou rulest the raging of the sea, thou stillest the waves thereof when they arise. Thou didst crush Rahab as one that is pierced, Thou didst scatter thine enemies abroad with thy mighty arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. Thou hast laid the foundation of the round world and all that is therein. Thou hast made the north and the south, 
Tabor and Hermon rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm, strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of thy throne. Mercy and truth go before thy face. Blessed is the people that can rejoice in thee. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Their delight shall be in thy name all the day long, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and by thy favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongeth our shield, and our King to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the second book of Kings, the seventeenth chapter, beginning at the twenty-fourth verse. And the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the people of Israel. And they took possession of Samaria and dwelt in its cities. And at the beginning of their dwelling there they did not fear the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. So the king of Assyria was told, The nations which you have carried away and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the law of the God of the land. Therefore he has sent lions among them. And behold, they are killing them, because they do not know the law of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, Send there one of the priests whom you carried away thence, and let him go and dwell there, and teach them the law of the God of the land. So one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. But every nation still made gods of its own, and put them in the shrines of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in the cities in which they dwelt. The the men of Babylon made Sukkoth Benoth, the men of Cush made Nergal, the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nimhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burned their children in the fire to Adramelech and Anamelech the gods of Sepharvaim. They also feared the Lord, and appointed from among themselves all sorts of people as priests of the high places, who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. So they feared the Lord, but also served their own gods, after the manner of the nations from from among whom they had been carried away. To this day they do according to the former manner. They do not fear the Lord, and they do not follow the statutes, or the ordinances, or the law, or the commandment, which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. The Lord made a covenant with them, and commanded them, You shall not fear other gods, or bow yourselves to them, or serve them, or sacrifice to them, but you shall fear the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt with great power, and with an outstretched arm. You shall bow yourselves to him, and to him you shall sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall always be careful to do. You shall not fear other gods, and you shall not forget the covenant that I have made with you. You shall not fear other gods, but you shall fear the Lord your God, and he will deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. However, they would not listen, but they did according to their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and also served their graven images, their children likewise, and their children's children, as their fathers did, so they do to this day. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Morning Prayer continues on page 7. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. 
the noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the seventh chapter beginning at the twenty-fifth verse. Now concerning the unmarried, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in view of the present distress it is well for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek marriage. But if you marry, you do not sin, and if a girl marries, she does not sin. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles, and I would spare you that. I mean, brethren, the appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the form of this world is passing away. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Morning Prayer continues on page 9. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always prevent and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who are the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Protect and prosper, O Lord, all those who labor at tasks of danger and difficulty, especially our essential and frontline workers, that they may be preserved in safety and health, and grant that knowing the dangers which beset them, they may ever take thought one for another, and be sustained by a sure trust in thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers this morning for all those who are in need of prayer, whether they have particularly asked us to pray for them or whether the Spirit of God puts it into our hearts to pray. As we make intercession for them this morning, we are reminded that we are coming into God's presence with them on our hearts. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this morning. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. And if so, I hope you'll take a few moments to like this video, to comment, to share it with others, to take a few moments to subscribe to the, to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Because if you do that, it'll make it that much easier to find your way back to us the next time we gather for prayer. And until we do that, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.